Well, with spring just around the corner, let's hope, many of us are anxious to uh, get into the gardens and start doing some planting. And Perry joins us now from Classic Landscapes and Ellerslie Gift and Garden. Good morning, Perry. Nice to see you again. Good morning, Mike. Always. So obviously, uh, people start to think gardening at this point, but they don't have to just think gardening. You can actually start seeding at home in your house. Yeah, it's a great time of year for that uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's great to get a head start in our gardening season, especially when you have some plants out there. You know, maybe things like radishes that might, uh, you know, you'll be able to harvest in three weeks. That's great. You can wait on something like a radish. But, you know, other plants, especially herbs, corn, different uh, garden vegetables, sometimes they can take up to three months. And so when we can speed up that harvest time, it's great for our summers. And the other side is just the, the part about it being winter and there not being a lot of growing going on. You can get that started indoors and actually just enjoy the really cool vibe of starting to see some you know, green leafy plants inside as well. Yeah, so it's nice to get started early, but you're not saying it's a necessity for most plants, is it? it it's not a necessity. I mean, again, the, the difference is just going to be that, you know, because we have such a short growing season, you're just going to be harvesting a little bit later in the summer. And that's fine. We still have enough time that if you want to just plant outdoors for the first time. And again, like I said, things like radishes that maybe grow a little quicker, you can do and just plant right in your garden. But some of the ones that are going to be a little bit longer, maybe you want multiple harvests through the season, then it's a good idea to get started early. But again, if it's not something you can do, you can still plant outdoors in the garden, be very successful and enjoy that as well. Perry, how important is it to get the, uh, the right soil mix when you're planting indoors? Well, soil mix is super important. Obviously, this time of year, we're not just going to be taking soil from outside. It's frozen. And, and garden soil can have things like weed seeds and different things from the summer uh, that we don't want to be bringing inside in terms of giving our new seeds a start because then we'll have to compete with weed seeds. So when you can buy a sterilized soil, typically, you know, you'll see something like a plant starter mix or something like I have here. Where you have an organic mix, it's actually got compost, um, kelp, you know, different nutritional you know, benefits that are actually worked into the soil. So you don't have to kind of worry about the, you know, the ingredients or the special mix that you have to put in. You can actually just get a soil, a good starter like this, and then you'll be off to the races and just, uh, you know, make sure that you're going to be watering and take care of it, taking care of it well. But again, you don't have to be super concerned with what's in the bag because, you know, all the good stuff has been put in there for you. Well, let's talk about uh, taking care of it other than now that we know what soil to use. What about uh, the requirements when it comes to uh, lighting and heating and that type of thing? Yeah, we do want to increase the temperature, be able to. Indoors is good, but sometimes we have light requirements that we can't achieve indoors. So, you know, maybe we'll have to put it right beside the window, but it's still cold outside, and so we're going to get some you know, sort of negative effects of that cold coming through the windows. So there's a couple options you go with. One thing that actually works really well is uh, there's heating pads. And so heating pads like this is actually just a flat pad you plug in. It'll actually just warm the, the tray or whatever from beneath, or if you have, uh, you know, small plant pots or whatever you're doing with your indoor planting. And so that's something that's really simple to use. And one thing that's become super popular and really effective is kind of the idea of the indoor greenhouse. And so you know, I have a small example of one here. And so this actually has, as you can see on the top, it actually has a full spectrum light as part of it. So the advantages of this, A, is it's going to get the right amount of light to help the plants grow quicker. It's also going to keep the humidity in and around the plants because it works, like I said, like a mini greenhouse. And so it has a couple beneficial effects and they're, you know, poly trays, so they're nice and light, easy. You can move them anywhere in the house, just plug them in and you won't have to be as concerned with, uh, you know, finding that perfect window that's a little warmer to get some nice bright light in the house. You'll have, you know, the perfect growing conditions for that indoor seed starting okay here's just a real premature question just because we have a couple of seconds left here uh spring cleanup i know we're, we're nowhere near thinking about that right now but what's the earliest one can get going assuming of course that some snow vacates the premises yeah honestly once the snow is gone it's a good time to get started um, a lot of things when we talk about leaf litter and stuff from the previous season it's good to compost but if you've had issues with bugs and stuff in the past um, you know, they tend to, you know, insects will tend to overwinter in leaf litter or even in the first few inches of the soil. And so if you can clean up some of that leaf litter, and, you know, again, if you've had some fungal problems or things like that, if you haven't, you know, just adding it to the compost pile or things like that is the way to go. Because when we can recycle and reuse, it's actually going to add nutrition, nitrogen back to the environment. And so that's a great way of doing it. Plus, it saves you a little bit of work in terms of bagging, that kind of stuff. You know, but again, if you haven't aerated in a while and you've got, uh, you know, really hard ground and super compacted, you're going to have to wait for the ground to thaw out a little bit more. Obviously, if there's still ice in the soil and frost in the ground, it's going to take a little while for that to happen in terms of coming out of the soil. Uh, but in terms of, you know, superficial cleaning and raking and stuff like that, you can get after it right after the snow's gone. All right. Something to look forward to. <laughs> Thanks, Perry. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care.
For more great ideas on how you can uh, get your garden all set, and whether it be indoors or outdoors, check out Classic Landscaping in Ellerslie Gifton Garden. They're at the corner of 100th Street and 6th Avenue. More information, well, it's all up on your screen.